We're here today with Scott Cole, and we're here on his property that burned in the fire of 2012 and the Arapahoe fire. Um, Scott, what happened to your property, and, and what are you thinking about as we enter the spring of 2013? Well, after we got up here, like the day after we were allowed to come in, it was kind of devastating, uh, drastically different. Uh, we had a lot of doubts and, and uh, wondering, you know, what if it was ever going to be able to be reestablished, if we'd even hold on to the property. But a couple weeks afterwards, you know, we actually saw some grasses coming in after we got some moisture, uh, kind of keeping our fingers crossed to see what the winter would bring for moisture. And then this spring, which has been good to us, and we're seeing a lot of promising signs in the shrubs and the grasses starting to come in. Uh, there's a few trees we found that are still alive, which is a blessing. We're here on the property of Scott and Marion Cole that burned during the 2012 wildfire season. This was one of the worst wildfire seasons on record, and this property, along with a lot of other acres, went just about completely burned. We have about 100% tree mortality on this property, and looking down at the ground, a lot of the grasses and shrubs and forbs that hold the soil in place also burn. If you're in the same boat they are, one of the first things you want to do is come out and do an evaluation generally the following year after the wildfire. Give things a chance to re-sprout if they're going to re-sprout, and then we'll know what kind of tree mortality we have and, and what we have as far as ground cover to work with. One of the first things to worry about is erosion of the soil. A lot of soil here is exposed, and if we have a, a big rainfall event, we can get a lot of soil movement that, as it washes downstream. So uh, controlling the soil erosion will be one of the first priorities for them to tackle. As you can see on this site, just about every tree was taken by the fire. The landowners decided that they're going to contour fall these trees or lay them down along the side of the hill to help control erosion, along with clearing out the dead stems so that when new growth comes, it'll have a clear shot without the old dead stems in the way to, to add to future forest fires. After the fire, it's important to look at the soil surface and evaluate what plants are there. Here we've got a couple of small plants that are starting to come back in to start to revegetate this site. There's a lot of things that will affect which plants return after a fire. How hot the fire was and what was there before are two major contributing factors. A lot of folks get real excited with wanting to reseed right after a fire. Well, it's important to take a break, see what's there, and then make a plan. If this fire was so hot, it can make this soil hydrophobic or that it repels water and water is not able to penetrate the soil surface. In order to, to, to break that, we have to do something to break that soil surface and mix that up. So making some kind of drag or some other kind of soil disturbance might be important on, on, on those types of sites. Other sites might be ready for seed and other sites may not even need seed. They might come back on their own. So it's important to do an evaluation to see what's there before you get busy getting to work. After a fire, there are some plants that will re-sprout very quickly. This is snowberry. It and plants like mountain mahogany come back fairly quickly after a fire, generally. Plants that don't come back very well include big sagebrush and some other types of sagebrush, as well as the conifer trees that you see all around. After a fire, devastation and disappointment can set in. But remember, nature is resilient, and with the right amount of inputs at the right time, you can help drive the system to meet your management objectives. Enjoying the successional process that will occur after a fire is part of the joy of living in a natural environment. Gather around you resource professionals that you trust, get their input, look at what other folks have done, visit sites that have burned in the past five and ten years to help make your management decisions more informed. You know, the, this group that has appeared here today has given us a lot of insight and thought as to what needs to be done as far as getting grasses going, doing the contour, you know, dropping of trees up here to stop erosion, and, you know, consider the choice. Do we just throw up our hands and sell it, or do we say, hey, this is the way it is, and we're off on a new adventure, and watch what Mother Nature and time brings. So.